Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at a new pair of active noise cancelling headphones from Sennheiser. This is the PXC 550. Uh, these are over the ear headphones that of course sound very nice because they are made by Sennheiser of course, but you will be paying a premium price. These retail for about $399, but uh, this is in line with other premium active noise cancelling headphones that are out there including the uh, QC 35s from Bose that we looked at not that long ago. I'll be comparing the Bose to this one uh, over the course of this review because they are uh, being marketed at the same group of people. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that these are on loan from Sennheiser. So when we're done with the review, we'll be sending it back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's take a closer look at the hardware now. The first thing I noticed is that the build quality on these uh, feels a lot nicer. It definitely feels like a $400 pair of headphones. And even though the Bose cost about $50 less, they didn't feel all that rugged to me. These do have a bit more of a ruggedness to them, primarily because there's more metal integrated into them. They have a bit more of a uh, stiffer feel, and that's not a bad thing. I think it actually uh, makes them feel less cheap. Uh, but despite the uh, rigidness, perhaps, of the overall design, they're very comfortable because there is a lot of cushioning here on these ear cups, as you can see, so they are very comfortable to wear over long periods of time. Uh, these are being aimed at business travelers who are often on airplanes for long periods of time, and I can say, uh, wearing these over the last couple of days, that they really do uh, feel quite comfortable. Uh, even on the band here, you've got a lot of cushioning in there to keep it from uh, digging into your head in an uncomfortable way. And the ear cups, at least for me, uh, surround my ears so I don't get uh, a lot of fatigue on my ears either. So it does look pretty nice. They uh, are very comfortable to wear. And you know, overall, I think it's just a really nicely built piece of hardware. Now these connect up with Bluetooth by default. And uh, you also have the option to plug in a audio cable at the bottom here to plug in directly if you're on an airplane or into your phone because uh, Bluetooth audio is not perfect. It's digital, uh, so you will lose some quality from uh, both from the service that you might be using to stream the music from, but also just through the Bluetooth connection itself. So if you want the nicest possible connection, uh, they do give you some wires in the box that you can use to connect up, and they also have some adapters as well. So if you're trying to plug it into a fancier stereo system with the larger connector, you can do that. They got the airplane adapter here, and then of course your uh, little audio cable for connecting up to this to the uh, little port here on the bottom. And this is a detachable cable, so if the cable ever goes bad, just get a new one and uh, you're back up and running again. Uh, you charge it up through this little port here and it will uh, run for about 30 hours when it's going wirelessly with the active noise cancellation. I think you'll probably pick up a little bit extra time on the battery if you are plugged in directly just because it's not uh, using the wireless radio for that activity, but uh, by and large, I think it'll definitely survive your flight to Australia or back from Australia, depending on what part of the world you're in. Uh, this button right here changes modes. There's a couple of preset uh, equalizer modes. One enhances voice, so if you're listening to some spoken word stuff, it gives you a little bit more uh, audio quality out of the voice there. I found it sounds fine just on its default position, which is where I left it. And then on the switch here, there's actually three settings for noise cancellation. So right now it is set to nothing. Uh, this is the middle setting, and this is the most active setting. So you have the ability to uh, adjust how much noise cancellation you're getting. So maybe if, you want, if you're on a bus or something and you do want to get some of the noise droned out but still want to be aware of your surroundings, you can adjust the level of cancellation. That's not something you could do on the Bose. It was either on or off. Uh, this one has some levels to it. Another neat feature is they have the ability, if you want to talk to somebody without taking off your headphones, uh, to pipe the microphone through on this. So it has uh, the ability, of course, to take and, uh, and make calls on it with your phone. And uh, that microphone can also pipe audio back in. So even though you're actively canceling noise, you can still hear people talking to you when you turn that feature on. It does turn your music off, but it's kind of a neat thing that if you don't want to take these things off or you're trying to ask somebody a question, oftentimes you can't really hear yourself talk when you have all the noise cancellation going. This does uh, pipe in some echoey audio back to you so you can at least get a feel for what you're saying to somebody. I thought that was kind of a cool feature. Now the way you activate all this stuff is on the back here. There are no physical buttons beyond that uh, one button I showed you at the bottom. So what you do on here uh, is do all the audio controls from these little touch pads on the left and right side of the headphones here. So the right side just adjusts audio. So if you move this up and down like so, uh, you can uh, make the volume louder or softer that way. And there are a whole bunch of controls for uh, taking calls and playing and pausing and fast forwarding. And I'm finding though that I'm sometimes uh, accidentally hitting this. It's very sensitive. So even if I'm just adjusting things on my head, 
head, I'm often uh, pausing the music or shifting to something else. Or in one instance, when I was on a call, I actually muted it uh, without intending to mute, uh, just because these things are really sensitive. So I would actually prefer real buttons, but I, just, I guess you, once you get used to it, it's fine. But I would have preferred a physical button, just because these things are very sensitive and very large as far as surface area is concerned. So it's not, not hard to really uh, set them off inadvertently. These are fairly lightweight, about 227 grams or eight ounces, and they fold up pretty flat, as you can see, and there's a nice little carrying case that uh, comes with the kit here, so you have everything you need to walk around with them safely. Uh, there's a pouch here for all of your cables and whatnot. They even put a divider in the middle of the case here because uh, these ear cups do touch each other uh, when they're folded up like this, and this prevents them from rubbing together and uh, damaging the finish of it, so that was a nice little touch there. Uh, not too bad. It's a little bulky just because these are over-the-ear headphones, and it's really hard to avoid that, so you might want to make sure your carry-on bag uh, has a spot for this, but I think this is about as small as you can make them, so uh, not all, all that bad there. And the audio quality on these is exceptional. In fact, I think it is better than what I heard on the Bose. And I've uh, spent a lot of time this weekend really uh, playing both and trying to get a feel for how each one sounds. And there's just a greater depth here. There's more bass, but it's not over the top bass. Uh, the mids and the highs are also very pronounced and just a lot of depth to the sound that I wasn't getting out of the Bose when the noise cancellation was active. These really did uh, an exceptional job of coming very close to some of the regular Sennheiser wired headsets that I uh, wear and like quite a bit. So I'm very pleased with the audio quality out of these and just the depth of sound that you get. The noise cancellation, however, is not as good. And it's not that far off from the Bose, but the Bose does have the edge. And I was uh, playing around with these things around uh, the kinds of noises that you would want to cancel out, engine noises and uh, air handlers and that sort of thing. And uh, the Bose did get rid of more of that sound than these did. But uh, when you do have your music up, the music sounded better out of these. So it really is a toss up whether you want more cancellation or better audio quality. Both are really, really good and uh, far exceeding expectations. But uh, if you are an audiophile and you want something for noise cancellation purposes, I think these uh, definitely have the edge on that front. Uh, there's also a built-in microphone, as I mentioned, so you can make phone calls with it. That does an excellent job of canceling out noise as well, and you can hear what the audio sounds like here. And here is what the microphone sounds like on the Sennheiser PXC 550 headset. And like everything these days, there is a companion app that you can use to make some additional adjustments to the headphones. The big one, of course, is the uh, graphic equalizer that they have installed on here. So you have a bunch of presets, and then you can go in and make further adjustments to it from there. So I can make uh, add additional points here to the curve. I can also just use a more traditional graphic equalizer layout here and uh, get everything set up. And then I can save these as custom profiles. But uh, there is a catch, because these settings will only apply to music that is being played through this Sennheiser app. So you have to have the music downloaded to your phone DRM free in order for this to work. It also works with the Tidal Music Service, which is a lossless audio provider, about 20 bucks a month to get that high quality audio, though. It doesn't work with Spotify or anything you have on Google Play or Apple Music because it has to be on your phone or through Tidal for it to work with those adjustments. The good news is, is that uh, the audio quality out of these is very good just on the default, so I don't see much of a need to make any adjustments to it, but it was kind of disappointing to have some really robust uh, graphic equalizer settings then really not being able to use them unless I uh, play the audio back through the app. Now, the big question is, is whether or not these Sennheisers are better than the Bose QC35s that I uh, bought a few weeks ago. And I have to say that if I had both to try before I bought, I probably would have opted to spend the extra $50 on the Sennheiser. And the reason is, is that they sound better. Not a huge difference in sound, but enough to say that these are a better sounding pair of headphones when you're listening to music, especially with that active noise cancellation turned on. There's better bass, uh, better overall clarity and depth of sound out of these than I was getting out of the Bose. And I was very impressed with the Bose, but I'm slightly more impressed uh, with the Sennheiser. And I'm a Sennheiser person. I have a pair of Momentum headphones, wired headphones that I use a lot. So these remind me a lot of those. Not, they're not better than the Momentums are, but uh, they are certainly a, a similar sound. And maybe I just prefer the Sennheiser sound over the Bose, but there is definitely better sound uh, out of these than out of these. But uh, the Bose does a better job of noise cancellation. So if you're looking to get rid of as much ambient noise as possible, uh, these do a slightly better job. It's not a huge difference, but it's enough that you will hear the difference, especially when you have uh, both pairs of headphones to try, and you'll definitely hear less ambient sound with these than you will with these. But uh, the build quality on the Sennheiser is better, so you've got a much uh, sturdier build here. I think it'll hold up longer over time. Uh, these feel a little flimsier to me in comparison, especially for a premium pair of headphones. Uh, there's definitely a build quality difference here, and uh, that $50 premium price will get you something better there. Although I am annoyed with the audio controls on here. These capacitive surfaces are very easily uh, tripped up when you uh, 
just touch them by accident. They're such a large surface that it's hard not to touch them. So I wish they had just gone with traditional controls like uh, the bows have here, uh, which just involve buttons versus having all these crazy gestures and everything else. It's a nice, nice feature, but I don't think it's for me. So I definitely like the audio controls better on the bows. But the bottom line is you're gonna do well with either. So if you only have 350 bucks to spend, uh, you're not getting a bad pair of headphones out of the QC35s, but uh, you will get a better pair of headphones here out of the Sennheisers if you wanna spend a little bit more money because these really are a nice pair of noise canceling headphones. This is Lon Seibin, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.